Hi everyone, I'm Jane Trotter and this is Accelerando Piano. In today's tutorial, I'll be explaining the difference between the three types of minor scales. The natural minor, the harmonic minor and the melodic minor. I'll start off with a natural minor, as that's probably the easiest to explain, and then we'll move on to the harmonic and the melodic forms. And I'll also be delving into why we actually have three forms of the minor scale. I've created a resource for this tutorial, which you can see up on the screen. You can download this from my Accelerando Piano website and use it as a reference whenever you like. Now, there's one important thing I do want to mention from the outset. A piece of music written in a minor key may use notes from all three forms of the scale at different times throughout the music. So you can't describe a piece as being in C harmonic minor or in C melodic minor. You'd just say it was in C minor. Let's begin with the natural minor. I've chosen A minor because it's a nice, simple key to work with. A minor has nothing in the key signature. And as you can see, there are no accidentals occurring along the way in the scale. In other words, there aren't any sharps, flats or naturals appearing before any of the notes along the way in the scale. This basic, unaltered form of a minor scale is called the natural minor. So that's our rule for natural minors. You play exactly what's in the key signature on the way up and the way down, and there are no accidentals occurring along the way. Let's have a listen. Just to compare, here's C natural minor. I chose this key because it's got three flats in the key signature, B flat, E flat, A flat. So when we play C natural minor, we'd be playing those three notes because they're in the key signature, we'd include those flats, but there are no accidentals along the way. There's no change to what's in the key signature. Here's C natural minor. For those of you who like to drill down into the real nitty gritty, here's the ordering of tones, a whole step, and semitones, a half step, in the natural minor. This ordering of tones and semitones will be exactly the same for every natural minor in every key. Okay, time to have a look at the harmonic minor scale. Now, remember for the natural minor, we played exactly what was in the key signature. There were no alterations. The harmonic minor is slightly different and we do need to make a small alteration. In the harmonic minor, we raise the seventh note or the seventh degree of the scale up a semitone on the way up and the way down. So if we look at our A natural minor to start with, our seventh note is G. But for the harmonic minor, we're not going to play G. It gets raised a semitone up to G sharp. So let's have a listen to that A harmonic minor. And you can see on the scale that the raised seventh note has that sharp added in front of the note along the way. So the G becomes G sharp. That G sharp isn't part of the key signature. You won't see it in the key signature. So our rule for our harmonic minor scales, you raise the seventh degree of the scale up a semitone on both the way up and the way down. Let's also have a quick look at C harmonic minor. Now, in the natural minor form, 
The seventh note of the scale is B flat, and you can see that on the scale on the screen. For the harmonic minor form, we've got to raise that seventh note, which is B flat, up a semitone. So the B flat becomes B natural. I'll play it for you. Raise seventh. Now, I included this one because the seventh note of the scale is a flat. And when you raise a flat, it becomes unnatural. So, just because we talk about the raised seventh doesn't mean you just bung in a sharp and hey presto, it's the raised seventh. You've got to take account of the key signature. So be careful. If the seventh degree of the scale is a flat already, when you raise it, it becomes unnatural. And here's our ordering of tones and semitones for the harmonic minor. Tone, semitone, tone, tone, semitone. Watch out for this one. One and a half tones followed by the semitone. And yes, it will be exactly the same for every harmonic minor in every key. Now we come to the melodic minor scale. And this is probably the trickiest one because it's different on the way up than it is on the way down. Like the harmonic scale, we need to make some alterations. So let's use our A minor example again. Here is A natural minor, the unaltered form. For the melodic minor scale, we need to raise the sixth and seventh degrees of the scale up a semitone on the way up. So let's check out that first. The sixth note of A minor is F, the seventh is our G. They get replaced with F sharp and G sharp. On the way back down, you basically cancel out what you just did. So you lower the sixth and seventh notes by a semitone. So instead of playing F sharp and G sharp, that G sharp returns back to G natural. That F sharp returns back to F natural. And you carry on down. So I'll play that whole scale. So here comes raised sixth, raised seventh, lower them again on the way back down. So that is our golden rule for melodic minor scales. On the way up, you raise the sixth and seventh degrees a semitone. On the way back down, you undo what you just did and you lower the sixth and the seventh degrees by a semitone. Notice on the music that those sharps are accidentals. They're coming along the way in the scale. They are not written in the key signature. And here's our ordering of tones and semitones for the melodic minor. You'll notice that it's not the same going up and down. And of course, that's because the notes are different when it's ascending and descending. This ordering of tones and semitones will be exactly the same for every melodic minor in every key. You might be wondering where the terms harmonic and melodic come from and why we have these two forms of the minor scale. Well, as their name suggests, it's all to do with the harmony and the melody. In a minor key, chords tend to use notes from the harmonic form of the scale. Let's check out this sequence. You can see in the first example that we have the raised seventh B natural, which is what you'd expect in the harmonic form of C minor. Notice that the A's remain as A flats. They're not raised to A natural, as would be the case for the melodic form of the minor. If I play the sequence of chords, it will definitely sound like it's in a minor key. It will sound sad.
Just to compare, here it is again with A naturals. You can hear something definitely sounds off. That's because it's missing the A flat. If we take a look at the C major scale and the C harmonic minor scale side by side, you'll spot that the two notes which are different are the E and E flat and A and A flat. The B natural is the same in both keys. These two notes in the minor key, the third degree and the sixth degree of the scale, play an integral part in differentiating the sound of a minor key from a major key. I'll play the major and the minor scale back to back so you can hear the difference. Hopefully you could hear the difference the E flat and A flat made to the sound. The major key sounds happy, while the minor key, with the change to those two flats, sounds sad. So, returning to our chord example, we're using notes from the harmonic form of the scale because these notes, particularly the E flat and the A flat, help establish and solidify the sound of the minor key. Melodies, on the other hand, tend to use the raised 6th and 7th degrees when they're going up and the lowered 6th and 7th degrees when they're going down. This is because, particularly in vocal music, it makes it easier to accurately pitch the notes in an ascending and descending melodic line as you don't have to form the potentially awkward interval of an augmented second. As you can see in this melody, the notes move up by step from the 5th to the 8th degree of the scale and then immediately come back down again. This is where the melodic form of the minor scale is most commonly used. Let's have a listen. Finally, just a quick word on the natural minor. As I mentioned earlier, the natural minor doesn't contain any alterations to the scale, so you're playing exactly what is contained in the key signature. The ordering of tones and semitones in the natural minor happen to be the same as that of the Aeolian mode. I'm not going to go into modes in detail here, but to make it easy to visualise, the Aeolian mode can most easily be described as all the white notes on the keyboard from A to A. In other words, A natural minor. The use of modes can be quite common in jazz composition, in folk songs, and of course, in early medieval and Renaissance music. Modes provide a very distinctive sound. Just to give you a taste, Here's a little piece I made up using notes from the A natural minor scale. I'm going to play it again with G sharps instead of G naturals. So I'll be using notes from the A harmonic minor scale this time. Using the G-sharp definitely changes the emotional quality and characterization. I prefer the natural minor version, which gives the piece a more plaintive folk song flavour. So, there you have it. That's the difference between the three forms of the minor scale. 
And you can see them all here to compare. The unaltered natural minor, the harmonic minor with the raised seventh, and the melodic minor with the raised sixth and seventh on the way up, and the lowered sixth and seventh on the way down. Remember, I have a comprehensive summary with examples, which you're very welcome to download from my Accelerando Piano website and use as a reference guide. Once you know the rules for how each form of the minor scale works, you can apply these to all of your minor scales, whether you're playing them or writing them in theory exercises. So I hope that was helpful. Best of luck and have fun with all of your minor scales.